It was Jesus before he became a man. Jesus who bent down, formed the body from the dust of the ground, breathed into it the breath of life, watched it become a living being. It was Jesus who created man. It was Jesus who said with his tables of stone, look, here is how I made you. Here is the circle. Stay inside the circle and you will have peace and joy and happiness. Step outside of the circle and you will suffer and be hurt. It was Jesus, the Son of God. Amen. And he wrapped the Sabbath into one big package and says, Here, this is for you. I made it for you. Incredible. Sabbath was made for me. Not for man, for the Sabbath. I'll tell you another something special about the Sabbath. We just learned Jesus died on the preparation day. That's the day before the Sabbath. And then he rested on the Sabbath day. And then he rose up again on the first day. Yeah. Do you think it was a coincidence that Jesus finished his work for you and me on the preparation day and rested on the Sabbath and then rose again on the first day of the week? The Sabbath is a sign that God is the creator of the heavens and the earth, but it's also a sign that he is our redeemer and recreator in Jesus Christ. It wasn't a coincidence. That's why the devil hates the Sabbath. Well, why does almost everybody observe the first day instead of the seventh day? Surely the New Testament must have changed it. Well, let's take a look. There are eight verses in the New Testament that explicitly mention the first day of the week. Six of them we have already seen. They're all just like the one we read in Matthew that says early in the morning they went to the tomb on the first day of the week and they found the stone rolled away and the tomb was empty. There's no hint there that the Sabbath was changed from the seventh day to the first day. In fact, when it says on the first day of the week, it was on the first day after the Sabbath that they went to the tomb. So it couldn't be changing the Sabbath in those six verses. But there are two others that are often used today to try to show that the Sabbath has been changed from the seventh day to the first. And so I want to take a look at those in 1 Corinthians chapter 16 is one of them. 1 Corinthians 16th chapter, verse 1. Paul writes to the church at Corinth. He says, now, about the collection for God's people, do what I told the Galatian churches to do. On the first day of every week, each one of you should set aside a sum of money in keeping with his income, saving it up so that when I come, no collections will have to be made. When do they to do this? On the first day of the week. And so many will point to that verse that you see, they will pass in the collection plate in church on the first day of the week. So now they're keeping the first day instead of the seventh. But I would ask, when does it say anything about passing a collection plate in church? Listen to it again. On the first day of every week, each one of you should set aside a sum of money in keeping with his income, saving it up, so that when I come, no collections will have to be made. Does it say anything about passing an offering plate in church? No. In fact, in the original Greek meaning of set aside, it really means set aside by himself, not in church. And furthermore, even if there was a meeting in church, listen, when was that meeting? It was on the first day of the week. But in Greek it says on the first day after the Sabbath. So how can the first day after the Sabbath now be the Sabbath? See, it never fits. Now there's one other verse. Acts, the 20th chapter. Here's a fun one. So turn there with me. Interesting story. On the first day of the week, we came together to break bread. Now, Paul is preaching, and they're breaking bread on the first day of the week. Now we have a little worship service, church service, maybe, on the first day of the week. Nope, nope. But we have to ask a question. Just because they worshiped, and preached and prayed together and broke bread together on the first day of the week, does that prove that the Sabbath has been changed? No. Not really. 
Because when it says, on the first day of the week, if we were reading it in Greek, remember, on the first day after the Sabbath, we came together to break bread. Well, why would they be coming together on the first day after the Sabbath? Well, that's a good question. Let's ask ourselves another question. When was this on the first day of the week? Watch. On the first day of the week, we came together to break bread. Now, breaking bread can also mean eat. Acts chapter 2 says they came together and they broke bread every day. So that doesn't mean that it's the Sabbath. <laughs> they were eating. Now watch. Paul intended to leave the next day, so he kept on speaking until midnight. There were many lamps in the upstairs room where they were meeting. Paul preached until midnight? And I only get to go till 8.30? I wish I'd been born in Paul's day. I could go till midnight, but don't worry, I won't do that to you. You didn't have to say that, amen. There were lights in the upstairs room where we were meeting. When was this meeting? It was in the evening, wasn't it? It was in the evening of the first day of the week. Now we learned that there was evening and there was morning the first day. So when does the day begin? The day in Bible times, they didn't have watches in Bible times. God didn't say, Adam, when you see Mickey's big hand go around 24 times and the little hand two times and they both end up on 12, it's a new day there. He didn't say that. He said, Adam, can you see the sun go down in the evening? The day is over. Yep. And the new day is beginning. It was evening. And the dark part of the day comes first. So if it was the evening of the first day of the week, then the seventh day was just coming to an end. Are you following me? Yes. The seventh day was just ending. So as in today's terms, it was a Saturday, the sun set, it was Saturday night, and the first day of the week began because the dark part of the day comes first. This was a Saturday night meeting. It wasn't a Sunday morning worship service. Why were they meeting? Well, you'll see why. Right here, verse 9, and a few more verses. Seated in the window was a young man named Eutychus, who was sinking into a deep sleep as Paul talked on and on. <laughs> That encourages me because I sometimes see people head nod and, and they'll come apologize to me, Pastor. I'm so sorry. I, I don't worry. They fell asleep when Paul preached. So who am I to get upset? <laughs> they fell into deep sleep. Paul talked on and on. And when he was sound asleep, he fell out to the ground from the third story and was picked up dead. And let that be a warning to anyone who falls asleep in church. And, <laughs> so what happened? What happened? In verse 10, Paul went down through himself on the young man and he put his arms around him and he said, Don't be alarmed. He's alive. And he went upstairs and broke bread and he ate. Again. See, breaking bread is just eating. Broke bread and they ate. And then after talking until daylight, he left. And verse 13 says, We went on to the ship and sailed for Asos, where we were going to take Paul abroad. Paul hiked 14 miles to Asos on Sunday morning to catch a ship. So why were they meeting on the first day of the week? Because he had been with them all day Sabbath. He was getting ready to leave. wanted to spend his last few precious moments with them. So he had another meeting Saturday night, and then Sunday morning he hiked and kept a ship that can hardly be understood as changing the Sabbath from the seventh day to the first day of the week. No. Paul oh, didn't do it. The disciples, did any disciples change the Sabbath? Chapter 13 of Acts, in Acts chapter 13, let's see if there's any evidence for that. In Acts chapter 13, the Bible says that Paul went to Antioch 
And on the Sabbath day, they entered the synagogue, sat down, and after reading from the law and the prophets, synagogue readers sent word to them, saying, Brothers, we have a message of encouragement to the people. Please speak. So here's Paul on the Sabbath going in the synagogue to worship. Now, I need to make something clear before we go any further as we talk about the Sabbath. I'm not saying that you can only worship on the Sabbath. True. I'm not saying that it's wrong to worship God any other day of the week. We should True. worship God every, every day. day of the week. Amen? Amen? This isn't talking about when you worship God, you worship God every day. Now, the Bible does say the Sabbath is a day of sacred assembly. It's a good day to come together and worship, but we should worship God every day, and it's never wrong to assemble together. To worship God. Well, here we are assembled together on Sunday night. It's not wrong. But what we're talking about is that God rested on the, on the seventh day and said, I want you to rest with me. So it's that's you. much broader than just going to church, folks. Amen. But today, and that's what John Paul II was all worried about, he said, it's not a holy day anymore, it's a holy hour. But it isn't even that, because Sunday isn't holy at all. The Sabbath day is what's holy. That's right. And maybe that's why it's not condensed to a holy hour. So Paul observed the Sabbath. And then they said, come back next week. Paul and Barnabas were leaving the synagogue. The people yes, invited them to speak further about these things on the next Sabbath. Well, on the next Sabbath, verse 44, almost... The whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. He didn't say, well, no, you don't have to wait until next Saturday tomorrow morning. We're going to be meeting now. No, he didn't say that on the next Sabbath. They assembled 14 years after the cross. And they're observing the Sabbath still. Well, some say, well, that's because there was a synagogue there. It was kind of handy to go. Well, we discover in chapter 16, verse 12, that Paul went to Philippi, a Roman colony in the leading city of, what the, of the district of Macedonia. No synagogue there, so what did he do? On the Sabbath, we went outside the city gate to the river to find the place of prayer. 22 years after the cross, we've already seen three examples here of Paul observing the Sabbath on the seventh day still. In Thessalonica, chapter 17, verse 2, as his custom was, Paul went into the synagogue, and on three Sabbath days, he reasoned with them from Scripture. Six times already we see them observing the Sabbath. Chapter 18, verse 1. Paul left Athens, went to Corinth. He met Aquila and Priscilla. He stayed and he worked with them. Verse 4, every Sabbath. He reasoned in the synagogue, trying to persuade Jews and Greeks, Jews and Gentiles, both together, worshiping together in the synagogue. Well, what are they doing there? We'll come back to that. Every Sabbath. How long was he there? Verse 11 tells us Paul stayed for a year and a half teaching them the Word of God, do the math, a year and a half times 52 weeks, that's 78 times that he observed the Sabbath there, add the other six, 84 examples of the disciples observing the seventh day of the week, and zero examples of anybody ever observing and making holy the first day of the week. Amen. Wow. Jesus didn't change it. The disciples didn't change it. Well, who did? Well, I want to show you how it changed. But in order to do that, I have to close the book. Because it's not in here. Where is it? Well, history tells us. Early in the history of the church, we saw the Jews and the Gentiles worshiping together. The church members worshiped together. They didn't just immediately split off the church and the Jews. The church were Jews, but they accepted Jesus Christ. That's right. And so there were, the only difference between the two was some of the Jews accepted Jesus, they were Christians. Other Jews didn't accept Jesus, they weren't Christians, but they were still worshiping together. But then, it wasn't until later when the Jews began to rebel against the Romans. But the Romans came down hard on the Jews and began to persecute them. And when the Jews were being persecuted by the Romans, the Christians who were worshiping the other women got persecuted too. Because in the eyes of the Romans, the Sabbath was a sign of a Jew. And there were those Christians worshiping together with the Jews, and they were getting persecuted because of what the Jews did. Now, they were not happy about that. 
And so they decided, hey, this isn't any fun. We don't want to worship with those guys anymore. We just keep getting beat up. So let's worship on our own. And they continued to observe the Sabbath, but they separated from the Jews. They continued to get beat up and persecuted.